What's up, anglers? Thanks for smashing that play button. Today, we're going to be learning a little bit more, getting a little bit acquainted with the rainbow trout. We're going to learn some information that we probably didn't know and some fun facts. Stick around and get made. We don't hope, we just get made. What's up, anglers? What's going on? What's going on? How have you been? It's been a minute since we've been up in the studio here in the chair, and I'm happy to be back. I'm stoked. I'm excited for this episode. This is, uh, you could consider it a how-to episode. Uh, we're going to be covering the rainbow trout. It's This is a series I want to do. Um, after the rainbow trout, we'll do, you know, the brown trout. After the brown trout, we'll do the brook trout. And then we'll just learn a little bit more about the trout species, get a little bit more familiar with what we love, who we love, and what we love doing, anglers. I don't know what to even call it, but we're going to be just covering the trout species, anglers. And like I was mentioning, the rainbow trout, man. We're going to start with the rainbow trout. Why? Because it's pretty much the most popular trout there is. It's the most familiar to most anglers, novice or experts. Um, most trout waters contain rainbow trout, and we'll get into why that is, and you probably know why, because of the hatchery system. So we're gonna kinda just, not get in real detail, you know, but we're gonna cover some topics here on the rainbow trout, some fun facts that I think, I didn't know until I started doing this research, and I wanted to present something to you guys that's gonna be a um, little bit different. You know what I mean? I don't pretend to know everything. I did my research. Most of this stuff is from Wikipedia, man. But I gathered the information for you guys, and I think you'll enjoy it. But the first thing we're going to get into is the anatomy of the rainbow trout. All right, anglers, the rainbow trout. We have our volunteer mascot here. We're going to use this as a great prop for us to learn about the rainbow trout all right so first thing we're going to cover is the anatomy anglers and i don't know everything by heart but i know some things and some things oh where's that go where'd it go there it is okay anglers here's a little breakdown on the rainbow trout's anatomy you have their nose nares or like nostrils their eyes their gill plates their mouths male or female the way to identify them uh, females more rounded with their nose in their mouth, uh, kind of just one uh, continuous uh, profile there. While the male, most male trouts during, especially during spawning season, uh, becomes more definite. Uh, but their kite, the hook jaws, you know what I'm saying? So that's how you could tell a male from a female. These are their pectoral fins, I believe. Yes, they are. They are their pectoral fins. Okay, and right behind. Uh, their pectoral fins, this fin right here, all right, this is their pelvic fin, okay? Um, this is their anal fin, and this is their caudal fin, okay, or tail. <laughs> this fin right here is their adipose fin, and some trout, some hatchery trout do not have their adipose fin, uh, or stock trout have their adipose fin, and that's how you can tell in most waters across the United States, um, the type of trout they are, whether wild, they will have the adipose fin or not. It most likely is a stock trout. They cut the adipose fin so they can tell apart and see how that environment's doing. And lastly, this is their dorsal fin. And this is what um, pretty much all these fins together. It's amazing how they work to make sure this trout expends the least amount of energy. Okay, least amount of energy and getting fat like this guy as far as identification anglers identifying a rainbow trout most likely you're going to be fishing waters that you know rainbow trout are lurking ready to bite whatever is on the end of your line here's a way if you don't know to identify the rainbow trout in particular is the green back or silver back and the most dominant and most familiar way is their color along their lateral line that reddish that pinkish that uh, fuchsia hues um, and their blushing cheeks okay and of course the spots you know trout in general all trout but the rainbow trout 
are known for their spots. So those are some tips and some ways that you can identify a rainbow trout stocked or um, wild. So now we're going to take a look at some of the subspecies anglers of the rainbow trout. You might be surprised what's on this list. So we're going to go ahead and take a look. Steelhead. If you don't know what steelhead are, those are trout that live in the ocean and come back to the rivers. You got to catch a steelhead. It's on my list. You have red bands, camloops, Mexican rainbow trout. There's some spots in Mexico that I found for trout. Kern River rainbow trout, uh, specific to California but and North America. It's, a, it's its own trout to that water system. The golden trout anglers, everyone wants to catch a golden trout in the back country, man. You got to hike to them. You got to go. The golden rainbow, the palomino, or as we love to call them here in Cali, the lightning trout. Those are just some of the other subspecies of rainbow trout anglers that you could probably put on your target list. So take a look at some other ones. If you find some other ones, drop them in the comments below. So where did the rainbow trout come from? Where, what is its origin? Well, to take a look at the rainbow trout's origin story, we're going to have to get a little scientific on you for a second, okay? So don't mind if I'm looking down at my notes and trying to pronounce some of this stuff, okay? <laughs> There's this Latin and, and uh, language origins from all over the world so that make up the, the scientific explanation and origin of the rainbow trout. So... I'm gonna try my best, just bear with me, okay? So first off, they are classified as a salmonoid, you know, probably uh, from the salmon lineage. They're a cold water species found in tributaries of the Pacific Ocean in Asia and North America. Their scientific name for the rainbow trout is a Oncorhynchus mycus. Oncorhynchus mycus. Oncorhynchus. Hynchus mycus. Oncorhynchus mycus. That is their scientific name. Okay, the rainbow trout is a Oncorhynchus mycus. Extreme Philly fishing. Did I pronounce that right? Let me know, Leo. So, rainbow trout in the United States. It wasn't until 1792 anglers that Johann Julius Walbaum classified the rainbow trout scientifically as the Oncorhynchus mycus. And, and he was a German naturalist and taxonomist. So mycus, all right, let's do a little bit of, so the genus, right, which is the classification, uh, the name of the fish, I believe, the type of fish, okay, the trout. So um, the, that's the Oncorhynchus is the genus, okay. Um, that's Greek, okay, and that's uh, the Oncos, Encore, encore is is derivative from a Greek word, onkos, that means hook, okay, and the the rinkos, right? Encore rinkos, the rinkos means nose, okay, uh, referring to the hook jaw of males, hook nose, right? Hook nose. That's what Johann was thinking when he scientifically named this rainbow trout. So this is the Oncorhynchus mycus, okay? That's a beautiful name, man. And mycus, okay, Oncorhynchus mycus, that was um, German, what they called fish, a nickname for fish, which was mykiza, okay? So there's a little fun facts for you guys. I didn't know any of that. Did you guys know any of that? Comment below if you know. I bet you didn't know. These are fun facts, man, and I'm excited to bring them to you guys. Let's talk about stock trout and trout farms in the United States and the world. The first trout stocking, the first hatchery was in 1870, and it was here right in the United States in California in the San, uh, the San Leandro Creek Hatchery. That's near the San Francisco Bay. It's a tributary, okay, the San Leandro Creek and that was the first trout stocking here in the United States, um, in the world actually. And the rainbow trout, these trout farms, not only do they, are they used to stock for sport, for our pleasure anglers to get out there and get on some trout, but they're also stocked and raised to supply 7% of the world's farm trout to restaurants and, and markets and 
everything else you could think of besides sport fishing. So we're going to wrap it up, anglers, with, I think, some of the top rainbow trout specific bucket list best places to fish and target the rainbows the big bows okay here are my top three new zealand okay you've seen those videos man new zealand that new zealand and in the canal and man it's huge huge 20 pound rainbows patagonia okay jurassic lake you've seen them they're huge and last but not least right here in the united states anglers alaska the rainbow trout, what uh, they grow in the wild. It's the last frontier, man. You know what it takes to survive in Alaska? It takes a lot, anglers. It takes a lot. And these rainbow trout, all the species are so beautiful and they're so just vibrant. And I appreciate them, anglers. And I respect the trout, the rainbow trout. So that wraps it up, anglers. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you want more of it, or if you got any ideas, drop them in the comment below. By you smashing this play button today, I hope you learned a little bit more about the rainbow trout that you didn't know beforehand. Also, I hope you had fun, learn some fun facts about the rainbow trout that you could go and brag to your friends about now. And most of all, I hope you developed a little bit more appreciation for the rainbow trout. My name is Mike. This is Trout Made Angler Company. Thanks for smashing that play button. Thanks for being with me. Thanks for all the support, anglers. We'll catch you next time. I'm out.